conceptual people talk Real about talk, it, it throwing shots. all of the elements just things that need to be dealt with and work that needs to be done. Um, again, I thank all of you guys for the love and support you have shown uh, me and my family uh, over the course of the last seven, eight months or so since uh, those series of heart attacks that I had. Uh, as I continue to work myself back in, I had another good workout this morning, uh, went for a bike ride, uh, still getting used to, you know, some of the physiological, uh, changes and how things feel and really learning to listen to my body. And so it's a, it's a process, uh, but you know, process always precedes promise. And I'm working on the promise of my giftedness, the promise of my destiny. And so I'm pushing myself as much as possible to get back to 100% uh, as quickly as possible. And uh, to get back to seeing and dealing with you guys on a more frequent basis as far as live broadcasts are concerned. Uh, that is important to me, but it all has to come together in time. And one of the things that I had to do was I had to reduce the amount of time I spend in my office and spend working. And uh, obviously that can't come from my clients, so I have to pull that somewhere else, pull it from somewhere else. And one of the things that I have to do now is kind of find the time uh, to do my videos. And often it's when I'm on my way somewhere and I can create uh, a quiet atmosphere as much as possible because I know the ambient noise from the riding uh, in this vehicle is, you know, definitely coming through, but it's a quiet space for me. I, oftentimes I ride in my vehicle with no music on. Sometimes I enjoy the music, whether it's the radio or my playlist, but sometimes I just like to sit in the quiet and think. And, you know, and I decided while I'm doing this, I'm uh, running a quick errand. I would uh, drop in and talk to you about something that's important, but I just want to say thank you before I start to talk about what I need to talk to you about. Uh, another thing I want to uh, encourage you uh, to support the work that we do. Uh, I mean, if you are aware of the work that we do at the Odyssey Project. If you're a work of the programs like Black Men Lead, uh, Rite of Passage, Program for Young Black Males, the Restoring Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, Working with Young uh, Black Girls and Young Women uh, on a number of different issues from ch childhood trauma and sexual abuse to domestic violence to depression and so much more. Uh, some of the other programs we have as well, if you go to the site, at the Odyssey Project 21.top, you can see the work we're doing. We need your support. So again, I'm going to uh, challenge you to step up and show some love and help us close out the year strong. Now, I just want to take a brief moment. There is this thing that we do. And I've shared this with you guys on more than one occasion. So this isn't anything new that I'm talking about, but it's, it's, it's an event that popped up that's new. Uh, that I want to use to shed light on what I've been sharing with you guys. Uh, I've told you before, since the early 1960s, the black voter turnout has increased every election, every presidential election cycle until we got to 2016. So from 1960 to, uh, to 2016, we had an increase in voter turnout. With that increase in voter turnout, consistently, religiously, 90% of it has gone to the Democratic Party. Voting straight Democratic tickets like no one else. There's no other group or race.
that has given 90% of their vote to any one of the parties. None except blacks. In that same time frame, we have regressed or worsened in every socioeconomic category that is measured today. From wealth to political fluidity, uh, to show social status, to academic uh, or education, um, home ownership, I mean, just uh, incarceration in, in, in so many different areas that we are measured, that, that can be measured. We have not improved in any of those areas. As a matter of fact, we have regressed. The wealth gap is widening. And this is that. This is not a promo for the Republican Party. It is definitely not a promo for Donald Trump. It is a challenge to blacks to start thinking and paying attention and stop allowing our emotions to govern our decision making. We, uh, I said this before that my observation has been that when we like someone, we will deucedly, uh, we, we become deucedly creative in the manner in which we will defend the, the most stupid of things they do. On the flip side, conversely, if we don't like somebody, we will totally ignore anything they do right, focus solely on what they do wrong, and literally promote the same negative assaultive behavior that we defend our person from, we will promote it against them. And we never ever stop to sit up and ask ourselves what's in our best interest. We literally have a fixated uh, dysfunctional relationship with the Democratic Party and we will not make them accountable and we will not make ourselves accountable for rectifying and fixing it. Uh, prime example, uh, Nancy Pelosi has either the, the Democrats are all going senile or they just become so emboldened that they don't care what they think, what they say, because they don't believe that it's going to change uh, how we see them or whatever. But Nancy Pelosi, who is the Speaker of the House, uh, the, well, the uh, minority leader, uh, excuse me, uh, the speaker, it's the speaker, I can't remember. Nancy Pelosi, the top Democrat in Congress, uh, has said twice in, in a little over a week that the reason why we don't have a new stimulus package or a new support package, you know, for a while, people who were unemployed were getting extra money along with their unemployment as a part of the government, the federal government's uh, support. That expired in August. And that that was a stalemate at what they wanted to offer and the, the, the Dems and Republicans could come to uh, uh, an agreement. And they went on uh, vacation for September. And Donald Trump did a temporary uh, executive order, I think, for like maybe two or three weeks. He gave an extra $300 a week, which was half of what people were getting from the government. That They were getting an extra $600 a week. Uh, but that went away. And so the stalemate that's been going on now, we now find that Donald Trump has actually been asking and pushing for that stimulus to go out. And... Nancy Pelosi's own word is we don't want to give it to him because he's going to leverage it for his election. So they are little, it's the Democrats who are actually withholding money for people who really need it. I'm not real big on social pro programs, first of all, foremost. But the way the system is set up, certain things need to be done. If you are for it, if you believe that you, you, you should be able to call in your government and ask for help, then this should be a problem for you. Um, so she did, she doubled down again and said that the fact that Donald Trump wants this so bad is our leverage. So what happens with, as with all bills for those who don't understand uh, politics is one side sits up and draws up a bill and puts in what they really want in the bill, but they also put other little earmarks in the bill that'll make it more acceptable or be, uh, you know, 
call for the other side to say, okay, I'll do it because of this. And then the other side will come back and say, no, you're going to have to put this in it. And so what you have is a bill that addresses one thing, but has a whole bunch of other things. And a lot of times it has absolutely nothing to do with the thing you're trying to address just to get people to uh, get enough votes to actually get it passed. Well, there are things that the Dems are looking for that the Republicans won't give. And so they are actually the ones that are withholding. And they have indicated via Nancy Pelosi that they are going to use the leverage of the fact that Donald Trump wants this money to go out and be in the pockets of American citizens. Her words, not mine. That they're going to use this as leverage to try to get what they want. And so what they are doing is literally playing politics with the livelihoods of America, with most of American citizens. Very few people are unaffected. Some of us are blessed enough to be able to still pay our bills. Some are struggling. Some are in dire straits. People are losing their homes. And there is something the government can do about it. Now, if you're one of those people that believe you go out and get it, you go out and get it, you 100% um, absolute capitalism, uh, those that get it, get it, those that don't, that don't, then uh, more than likely you wouldn't be voting Democrat anyway. Second of all, my thing is the whole reason that most blacks vote for Democrats is that they've been confused and convinced that Democrats have their best interests at heart. Well, if you're believing that where you're at, you're in the last place on the socioeconomic ladder, at the very bottom of the socioeconomic ladder, and you need assistance and opportunities and doors opened and policies in place that will allow you to put things in motion through your own activities and desires to advance yourself, but you need some policies to change because there are literally policies in place that make it extremely hard for you to do the things you need to do to advance yourself. So you want Democrats to do that. So here's the problem. Where have they done it? They've done it. They've, they are extremely good at talking good. You know, you got one, one, one dog that bites you, the other dog, you know, one dog barks before he bites you. The other dog licks your face before he bites you. That's the Republican and the Democrats. The bottom line is some of the most horrible policies and destructive policies uh, when it comes to the interests of blacks have happened under uh, Democratic administrations and Demo uh, Democratic controlled uh, Congress. Uh, that's the truth. Uh, I've, I've, I've outlined it, I've pointed it out that the disintegration of the black family started with policies implemented under the Johnson administration. We went from in 1960 where 75% of black youth were born into two-parent two, two households to now it's absolutely reversed to where we're at 73 to 75% of black children are born into single parent households and it's not by accident it can you can literally trace it along policies you can literally trace it along policies you can trace it along uh other other bills and, and laws that have been put into effect that have neg negative negatively impacted us and so what we have to be able to do is be honest with ourselves and be honest with ourselves. I'm not, again, this is not a pro-Trump, uh, you know, tirade or a pro-Republican tirade in the slightest. Not at all. But what I'm sitting up saying is we're going to have to be honest with ourselves about our relationship with Dems. We are going to have to actually sit up and be honest and, t and ask ourselves, what have we gotten in return for 90% loyalty? Nobody's giving out 90% loyalty because nobody can deliver. No one side has delivered to anybody that way. So people are moving with what they believe supports their interests. We've been going 90%. And in that 90%, we've gotten the least from this system out of anybody else. Yet we've shown the most loyalty. Now, Nancy Pelosi, go research this yourself. Don't listen to me. Go research this yourself and see what I'm saying. The bottom line is, when you know that your constituents are suffering, sometimes you gotta compromise and take a hit. Say, so we're gonna go ahead and do what we gotta do to get this through. 
so that people can save their homes, people can feed their children, people can do what they want to because this pandemic has had an impact. I'm sitting up watching some major heavy hitters take down. I, th I, I heard Neiman shut down. Uh, me and my wife love uh, uh, Genghis Grill. They've shut down. Uh, m many other places that I ride by that have been staples for years, Golden Corral, have shut down a lot of their places. Luby's is gone. And these are p companies that have survived recession after recession after recession, but they've taken hits. When, what you have to understand is when these places close down, they don't only create an inconvenience, they create joblessness. They are laying off people. You go to the mall and there are stores that aren't open Stores that you look at and go, man, you know, uh, what, what happened? They could not afford to stay open. This is happening. So if it's happening to businesses that have set plans in place to deal with lean times like this, what do you think is happening to uh, lower middle class, lower middle class and, and impoverished families? There are some people with six figures that are taking hits. We have to do better at thinking. We have to do better at evaluating. We've got to do better at vetting uh, politicians. We've got to do better at coming up with agendas and plans and challenging uh, those who want our vote to step up and offer something that we can measure so that we can hold them accountable. I just want to drop by and, and put that on your mind. Again, don't forget to show your support. Don't forget to show your love. Uh, the way that you can support us is always going to be in the description box of every video on the YouTube channel, the Black Voice YouTube channel, and in uh, post box and description boxes on any other platform. Uh, with that being said, I'm going to get out of here. You guys have an unbelievable day. Once again, thanks for all the love as I heal. I'm out. Hello, everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time you know outside of the businesses that i run like myriad business solutions the visionetics institute odyssey media group i also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in houston dallas and other areas uh, i'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the odyssey project is doing in the inner cities uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here dropping in on you. First of all, I want to thank everyone for all the love and support that you have given uh, and sent my way and my wife's way and the organization's way. Now I want to just take a brief moment to remind you that we still need your support. We still need your help. Go to the description box of one of our videos and see how you can support the work we're doing. Keep supporting, keep loving us, and we're going to keep loving you back. Have an awesome day. Yeah, he sounded better than Jay. People talk Real about talk, it. I ain't throwing shots. All of the elements.